So now we want to take a look at the stereochemical consequence of doing an SN1 reaction. We saw with SN2 reactions, doing backside attack resulted in inversion. That is not going to be the case here in SN1. We're definitely not doing backside attack. So, uh, in fact, the leaving group leaves and the nucleophile attacks in totally separate steps. So backside attack is not even possible. It's not something we can even talk about. Uh, so in this case, first step, leaving group leaves. And that gets us our carbocation. So, and the key is that this carbocation is sp2 hybridized. It's, it's not tetrahedral anymore. It's trigonal planar. It's a flat structure. And when you attack a flat structure, you can attack from either the front side or the back side. If you attack from the front side, you'd end up with this product. If you attack from the back side, you'll end up eventually with this product. And so in this case, uh, we say that racemization takes place. When an SN1 reaction happens at a chiral center, you'll form both versions of that chiral center, both R and S. But it turns out it won't be perfect 50-50, so it's actually not a true racemic mixture, even though we say racemization takes place. But it turns out you'll have a slight excess of the inverted product and a, s a slight lacking of the product where the stereochemistry is retained. And the idea is that this bromine here, when he leaves, he's leaving from the front side. And even though the nucleophile attacks in a separate step, when he leaves, he leaves and is blocking the water from attacking from that side to a small degree. And so you get a little bit more of the inverted product than the retained. So not a true 50-50 racemic mixture, and that's definitely something you should be aware of. So SN2, inversion takes place at a chiral center, but SN1, racemization takes place at a chiral center.